Yeah. So uh, like I, I, I think I jumped on board. Maybe it was last draft here. I don't know. Our last uh, episode here. But the Brian Branch train is in full movement and it's not going anywhere. I am fully convinced that if Brian Branch is sitting there at 17, the Pittsburgh Steelers are just going to look at this guy and say, well, he is by far the best player on the draft board. That being said, I don't think Joey Porter Jr. makes it to 17. J- Daniel Jeremiah in his press conference the other day made it sound very slim that the Steelers will have an opportunity to sign Ringo or draft Ringo, Gonzalez, Witherspoon, or Joey Porter Jr. He thinks that all those guys will be gone by 17. He also said, hey, if, if one of them's there, you run it to the podium. I still think I'm 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 maybe considering brian branch over both of them i think he fits perfectly in this defense um i have heard rumbles that's the secondary is significantly higher than any other position for the steelers this offseason that they are prioritizing that with a serious emphasis brian branch could play safety the third safety if you, if you want you know box safety could replace terrell Edmonds. easy he plays slot Beautiful for when Cam Sutton has to play on the outside. He plays nickelback, which is what the Steelers have looked for for two seasons now. And Arthur Millett is just not that guy. I think he's the perfect blend for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's versatile and he's a superstar. And when I make t-shirts and it's a big branch shaped as a train, it's going to be even better because I just think, I think that guy is a stud. And the only reason that he'll slide is because he's a safety and, you know, the NFL draft doesn't really like safeties, but I think it's such an easy move for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then they come back in the second round. So I titled this, you know, the Steelers land four starters because Daniel Jeremiah said that he believes the Steelers could land four starters in their first four picks. And I think that they could. I don't know if all four of them will start, but I think all four will be starting quality players who play good chunks of reps. Um, the second pick you know, technically round two, but it's the 32nd pick in the draft. I have Osiris Torrance out of Florida. I, I think a lot of people are talking about left tackle and replacing Dan Moore. And, oh, that's got to be the biggest need. I think if the Steelers, in the Steelers' eyes, they feel a lot more comfortable leaving Dan Moore out there than Kevin Dotson. Kevin Dotson is going to play on his, the last year of his rookie contract. There's no way he's getting another deal after the season unless he has some wild year, but I just don't see that happening. You replace left guard before you replace left tackle because you have more time and Dan Moore can still develop, whereas you kind of know what you got out of Kevin Dotson at this point. Um, I think they both had terrible years, so it's not like, oh, one's going to be better than the other one. I think replacing either of them works for the Steelers. I still think Kevin Dotson's going to walk into the offseason with an upper hand in the starting competition, but I wouldn't be surprised if Osiris Ter- Torrance takes that uh, takes that role by – August um, second second round pick pick 49 I have Siaki Ika I hope that I said that right out of Baylor my thing here is simple people are talking about edge rusher people are talking about inside linebacker people are talking about cornerback the Steelers haven't had a nose tackle in like three years everybody's talking about going to sign Javon Hargrave for 20 million dollars that's not going to happen what you could do if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers is draft a big man in the second round Ika I believe it's Ika right mm-hmm. um Fits that nose that that a gap perfectly. He's a run stuffer. He's a big body. He, you allow him to play nose this season and be your your true blooded nose tackle with Cam and Larry Ogunjobi while Demarvin Leal develops as a defensive end. And then if Cam retires after this season, you can move Ika to the to the right to play for Cam. Or if you know a couple years down the road, you draft another guy to develop. I don't know, but I think he's the building block for that defensive line that you have to add if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers and being there at 49, I think is very, very doable for the Steelers. Um, I'll, I'll go through two more here before we start talking about it. Round three is Kai Blue Kelly out of Stanford. Um, I would have liked Julius Brents a lot better for the Steelers, but I don't think he's going to slide that far. I think he'll move up as the draft stock or as the combine goes through when his draft stock improves. Whereas I think Kelly will kind of sit there and be that, third round pick at 80. Um, He's not a starter. He's not going to walk in here and beat out Levi Wallace on the outside or Cam Sutton. But what he is, is when the Steelers run those three safety sets and Brian Branch drops back with Terrell Edmonds and Micah Fitzpatrick, 
Cam Sutton can move inside and play the slot or play the nickel. And then Kelly and Levi Wallace could play on the outside. He's that third corner. That third corner is very important to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I think that fills a role. He showed a lot of upside in Mobile at the Senior Bowl. And on top of that, Mike Tomlin coached his dad at Tampa Bay. So there's a blood connection there or there's a family connection there. I just think that he's good enough where he's like that second tier of cornerback in this draft but he's high enough in that second tier that the Steelers will be like, okay, at, at 80, we feel very good about that. Um, and then one more before the two seventh round picks, which are, you know, I have an edge rusher out of Michigan, uh, Iabi Oki and Michael Wilson, a wide receiver out of Stanford with the last pick, which I think is a big, and because, you know, he, he's dealt with injuries every single season. So you don't know what you're going to get out of that guy, <clears throat> but round four, um, and shout out to Twitter because they were going at me yesterday trying to guess the pit player that would come to the Steelers <laughs> this draft. I have Carter Warren, left tackle out of pit. Um, I think he's going to slide because of his injury. He's working at the combine, right? He said that he is going to do drills at the combine, I believe. Yes, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so he, he'll he bump his stock a little bit, but he's still going to fall because he, you didn't get that second half. He's from Pitt. Pitt had a great year, but he's an offensive lineman, and he's not the offensive lineman. That fourth round pick, I think the Steelers could find him there. They'll obviously ask Kenny Pickett. He's going to have nothing but rave reviews. You bring in a left tackle because you still need depth that left tackle because Trent Scott is not the answer as your backup tackle. I think Carter Warren could bring some youth and some, you know, long term upside. It chooks, you got to remember, Chooks Accor for was a third round pick. So Kevin Dotson was a fourth round pick. So these guys could develop into something. And I think Carter Warren comes in here with no, I mean, Dan Moore Jr., fourth round pick, with no expectations to start, but can develop. And I think that helps because he is dealing with an injury or recovering from an injury. And it kind of takes all that pressure away. Yeah, I I like this draft. Um, I think my two favorite picks were Torrance and Ika in round two. Like those... I remember Ika was a guy like people were talking about first round, like earlier mm-hmm. in the process. Torrance is we saw him down in Mobile. He's a mauler. Branch is is interesting. It seemed like he came on really quickly, um, and and really fast, and kind of came out of nowhere. Um, when you first brought him up, I wasn't really expecting him. Um, yeah, that, that so that's an interesting you know way to go in the first round to me. Yeah, I think that Branch is a guy that isn't going to get talked about with the Steelers a lot, but he's a stud and. You know, we're going to get into like sleepers here in a moment, but I think he's a guy that in that first round people are are going to overlook because he played on a real dominant defense, but like he's not, you know what I mean? Like Minka Fitzpatrick had noise. Derwin James had noise. These guys coming into the NFL like that were those top 10 picks or near the top 10. There was so much noise around these guys because the cornerback class is so good this year. I think that's what's getting the noise. And then Brian Branch is really like that only safety in the first round where you're like, okay, he's good. But like, is he Christian Gonzalez? I think, yeah, I think he, I think he is Christian Gonzalez. I think he plays safety. And and that's the other thing is, you know, Derwin James and Minka Fitzpatrick, they could play center field. Like they could be a ball hawk. They could be the the middle of the field. Brian Branch has never played that position. He's never played the, uh, the like sky hawk center fielder for Alabama. He was more of a box safety slot guy. Daxton Hill is the perfect example of him. I thought Daxton Hill was a first round talent who went in the second round. I think that Brian Branch is going to be a first round talent who goes, you know, mid to late in the first round. And I just think that if he's sitting there and nobody else is sitting there, you know, if one of the corners are sitting there, I could see the Steelers drafting him. If Paris Johnson slides, I could see him sitting or them drafting him. But if nobody else slides, I think that the Steelers go up and get a safety. Yeah, and I think you make a good point about the corners because after, after like Witherspoon, Gonzalez, and Porter, I think those are the kind of consensus top three guys. Like, there's a significant yeah. step down from there. Yeah, at um, Ringo too. R- Ringo too. Oh yeah, Ring- Ringo. He gets kind of well. lost in this. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He does. But, but there um, is. Yeah, it's like that second gap of guys like Brent's, uh, Clark Phillips, who's real short, and I think that the combine's actually going to hurt him. Uh, Kai Blue Kelly. And I think that that second group is still starting quality guys. But yeah, like the the top of this draft and cornerback is like, you know, it's usually you have like a Jalen Ramsey or whoever. This year it's like four Jalen Ramseys. And you're like, okay, well, that's awesome. So everybody else is kind of getting overpassed. 
Um, and I think that's going to help guys like Osiris Taurus fall for the Steelers because people are going to be like, okay, well, there's so many defensive stars in this draft. Why would I draft a, you know, mid tier offensive lineman that might not even be able to come in here and start week one. You know, it's a Creed Humphrey thing where Creed Humphrey fell, shouldn't have fell. And I think the Steelers will see that they'll see a guard and they'll say, Oh, we're drafting him. No doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's my draft. I feel good about it. Feel good it's about it. We'll have another one after the combine. Um, you know, the, I don't think anything really happens until the combine. You hear more noise at the combine. You actually get to meet with scouts and, you know, you kind of get some real sources right now. It's just the the deepest I, I got out of anybody, because I think this is the deepest that the Pittsburgh Steelers are right now is the secondary is a high priority, which I think we we knew. I think it was kind of put like, oh, it's going to be more of a priority than people think. Um, but besides that, you know, noise is small because the Steelers are still, you know, this is where things happen. Free agency, the whole nine. You, you The NFL knows exactly what's going to happen at the end of the combine in every direction. Free agency, the NFL draft, the, you know, contracts are getting negotiated out here, whether they are or not. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, everything happens at the combine. So we'll have more noise afterwards.